recommend individual stocks or index funds or both? Yeah. So again, we went back to your very first question. I was somebody starting out and I recommended the ETF for the S&P 500. Why? Because you're getting 500 of the largest, best companies in America and the world as one big bundle. Pretty cool, right? And it's really yeah. easy and inexpensive and so on and so forth. Um, but but um, the converse of that is if you if you if you can pick a company that does really really well right and then ride that train you're going to make more money than the s p 500 right because it's gonna it's gonna have some dogs and some you know some some stallions in it right um so you're going to do better the, tr the the trick is two tricks one it's hard to find and pick out the right stock right it's hard you know hard to be a good stock picker but uh even worse it's hard to deal with your emotions right um like like right now i think uh facebook is down like 60 or 70 percent right and you know people that own it um probably don't feel very good about that right or, or another okay. even more extreme example is is bitcoin right crypto right crypto's oh, like yeah. got creamed lately right now there oh, are yeah. there are folks that have the mental fortitude to go all right I, it's creamed but it's still the same crypto I owned before or the same company I owned before Facebook. So they have to say, is Facebook still a good company? Will it recover, right? Now, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, right? But, but that's the trick with, with any type of investment is to get past that psychological thing. What do you do when there's a down market? Because most people, you know, they freak out and they get out. And when they freak out and they get out, they, they've lost money. If they, but on the other hand, if they're Again, if they've done a good financial plan and they have, you know, their, their debts are gone and they have their cash reserve, right, ever, they'll ride out that storm, right? And, you know, they'll, they'll recognize that there's going to be downturns in the market. And so whether I picked an individual stock or whatever, I have a number of stocks, right, that the likelihood of all of them being down is smaller, right, except for 2020s or 2008s and, you know, 2022s, right? Um, yeah. when, you know, I'll shift by the tide. But, yeah, I, I, I like it. That people pick their own stocks, but I find very few people that can actually do it well, right? Because either can't do it, they either can't find the right companies, or their emotions get in their way and they blow it, right? So it's it's tricky. Yeah. yeah. Or they follow the herd, right? People follow always the follow herd the herd. And... People always follow the herd. I have a little uh, drawing that I it's on a poster behind me, and and it's a little curve thing, right? So it goes like this: <clears throat> so people buy when things are going up. They usually buy at the top, right? Because you know, every, they're following the herd. Everybody's making money. They're going to their cocktail parties, whatever. They bought this stock or that stock, and so they want to get on the action too. So they get in yeah. too late, right? Because all the growth happened, you know, yesterday, and they're in too late. And then the market turns around and goes down, and they lose money. And of course, when you know things go up, they don't go up in a straight line. When they go down, they don't go down in a straight line either. They go down a little bit, then they go up a little bit. They go down a little bit, they go up a little bit. So I'm down eighty. I'm down twenty percent. They go. You know what? Um. Next time it goes back up, you know, just a little bit above what I have now, I'll sell out. And instead of going up, it goes even further down, right? And eventually, and I remember people telling me this in 2008, they wouldn't even open their brokerage statement. They didn't want to see what their account values were because they know they were going to be terrible. By the way, those people are probably better off than the ones that looked at it every day, right? Listen to the news, yeah, right? Exactly. So they get out too late, they get out the bottom, they lock in their losses, and then the stock market turns around, they're sitting on the sidelines worrying that it's not a real rally, right? And they watch and they watch and they watch and they watch, and then eventually the stock market is up too high and they get back in again. So they buy in too late, they get out too late, they repeat that over and over again, and they never make any money. <laughs> that sounds about right. Right? <laughs> right. I mean, and people that's, just have that, to look at history and, and realize that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, if you have a good solid plan and, and, and somebody that sometimes talk you off the ledge, that, that's part of, you know, my job as being a, a advisor. It's not just about, you know, helping people specifically with their money. It's sometimes getting the psychology, getting the, the couple on the same page and, and understanding that they're going to have fear. They're going to have, you know, all these different emotions to deal with. You got to deal with all that, right? Yeah, so you got to be a technician, you got to be a politician, you got to be a marriage counselor, and then you can be a good financial advisor. <laughs> Sounds good. Or just, you know, with a good financial advisor, or if you learn yourself how to pick a diversified portfolio of stocks, bonds, and then you dollar cost average, right? So invest every week, small amounts, yeah. not trying to time the market, 
that that's a good strategy, right? The great strategy again, the psychology gets in the way, right? Because when the TV goes on sale, instead of buying it, they stop dollar cost averaging. They should be buying more TVs, right? <laughs> but they don't. And they have they to buy... automate it, right? Yeah, and they, yeah. The the more automated it is, the more likely it is you'll stick with it, right? Because you know we're all have busy lives, right? And um, you know if you can have something that's every week takes a certain amount from your paycheck, and you have a system that every time it goes in, it gets the diversification you're talking about. Right, then you know you're going to have a higher likelihood of success if you can get the emotional roller coaster off the way, off the table, right? Out of Absolutely. The way. I know from my own personal experience. I mean, if it's not automated, nobody wants to put money into a falling market. But if it's automated, it's happening. And then you don't two think two about it. Later, it, just it benefits yeah. you. Yep. Great. Yep. Um. So let me ask you this. Right now, on the subject of bonds. There yeah. are some really good bond funds, like emerging market bond funds are paying um, a yield of above 7% right now. A lot of index funds that focus on emerging market bonds. Yeah. And then also there are, you know, long-term bond funds paying like above 5%. So you mentioned by uh, short term, maybe three months treasury, right? With a maturity of three months. Yeah, but what kind of diversification do you recommend with bonds? Should people have like emerging market bond fund, um, uh, state maybe it's state tax exempt bond fund wherever they live if they live in like New York or California, right? Um, a U.S. bond fund. Like, how do you recommend? How many bond funds do they need to have the right diversification? So bonds, yeah. remember again, are debt, right? You're lending money to somebody. So if I buy a three-year or three-month treasury bond from the federal government directly, I have a lot less risk than when I'm in a mutual fund full of different bonds, right? The the, the beauty of the mutual fund is you get to diversify. One dollar buys a hundred different things, right? For versus if I had to put one dollar in the three-month treasuries, I you know, that's my, and you can't do it with $1, but you know what I'm saying? The, the, yeah. the point is, the point is if, you know, they're going to have, uh, you know, different bond funds, you mentioned foreign, you mentioned, you know, tax advantage, you, uh, uh, you, you mentioned um, all kinds of things, but when, yeah. when you own a bond, if you, you have two basic risks and this is the, the teeter totter. So as interest rates go up, the value of bonds go down. And as interest rates go down, the value of bonds goes up. And you know, just to give you an example, if I had $100,000 at a 10% uh, return, right, invested in a bond, a 10% return, and today, and then tomorrow, the, the return I could buy that same bond, but I get 20% return, then that means the value of my bond went down to, from 100 one day to 50,000 because as the rates went up, the value went down. But guess what? Mm -hmm. If I held that bond through its duration, let's say it's a you know one year bond, if as long as the creditor doesn't default, you know, it doesn't go into you know banker and pay, I'll get 100%, I'll get the whole hundred thousand dollars back, even if it's only worth 50, right? And I can control that, right? I can own that bond and I can control that. And so that's why I would advocate um, you could owning specific bonds would generally be better than owning um, a bond mutual fund, right? To give you control. And, it, but you know, taking that further, because right now the yield curve is so distorted, the short, the short term bond to get 3% or 4% on a three year, basically risk free investment, you can just buy it in an ETF, you know, with a dollar and get, you know, you're going to get some one month and two months and three months and six months. And I think you, most of them are up to like, that's about it. I think it stops at six months. So you get federal government not going to default. You get guaranteed interest rate. You got um, almost certainty that they're going to hold through the duration and no fees. Right. So yeah, I like great. those. I, I, I like those. Um, you know, foreign bonds. Again, that's you got it. Right. You got to look at the you know who you bought, who you lending the money to. Are you lending it to Indonesia? Are you lending it to North Vietnam? Are you lending it to you know the company there? Will they default? What's the duration? Other call options on those bonds? Um, you know, there's all kinds of different things. And most people, again, don't have the time or the expertise to figure all this out, which is why, again, if you can work with a good money manager, that this is all they do. I'm, there, you know, there's people that actually love this stuff, right? <laughs> and yeah. they, and they, they live it 24 seven, right? They're in general, um, going to do a better job of picking them than you are unless you're lucky right yeah i love that point though because 
Like, for example, if you owned a bond index fund, pretty much any of these bond index funds I mentioned over 2022, yeah. as the interest rates have risen over the yeah. last, whatever, 10 months, bond funds have lost near 20% in value. Yeah. So like if you were to sell your bond fund right now, you may be 15% down in value, even though it's paying 5% or 7% yield, where if you bought the bond direct and you held it for the duration, whatever it is, three months, one year, two years, 10 years, whatever it is, you're guaranteed all your money, money back, even if it goes down during that period. But as long as you hold it for the duration, you're going to get all your money back. That's right. So it's a, a safer option. But yep. on the flip side, I mean, if you buy into these bond index funds right now that are down like 15%, potentially they could go back up in value as interest rates start to drop, right? Yeah. The thing is, you just have no control over it, so right? ETF going. that emulates the three-month uh, treasury, it's that's all it does. It, it's it's a very, very you know focused uh, ETF. So you're still really buying one month, to, you know, one month, three months, six month treasuries inside of this. It's a short duration. It's it's pretty. It's a pretty safe thing. Right. Where can um, listeners get that ETF? Any particular um, place? Any, anywhere. There, it's, it's the, I think the symbol's B I L, like Bill, right? And, okay. Um, yeah, you can buy them on you know through any exchange and and um, yeah, that's it's really simple. Today, oh, now good. six months from today, somebody listens yeah. to this, or five years from today, who knows where interest rates are going to be? But you know, today, yeah, three three percent risk free, liquid, pretty darn good. Um, what I'd like to talk about next. Well, actually, let me ask you a question relating to your book here. Oh. Okay, good. so in the the business owner's guide to financial freedom, you know what Wall Street isn't telling you. Yeah. which I'll include a link for in the video, in the oh, description of the video. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned uncover investment strategies Wall Street won't tell you. What are a few of those strategies? Could you just throw out? <laughs> yeah, 